afternoon and the evening. It's the Wayne World Podcast. You know what it is. We're going to get that raw. We're going to get that real, that uncut. For so, for so, for so. So it's your boy, Ant Mo. For so, for so, for so. So it's your boy, Ant Mo. Well, don't act like you don't know we love God. Top, top, top of the morning, the afternoon, and the evening to you, whoever you may be, wherever you may be watching, looking, or listening, it's your boy Aunt Mo, <laughs> dropping out of endo. Whoa, let me with your big baby. We're gonna wise word is my middle name. Turn back. And we got that boy, oh, uh, what's your name again, for? At Randy C. Mays, man, you know, somebody about that, my whole name. <laughs> Hold on. Don't move not another further. So you just really just going to mess with my stuff like that, folks? <laughs> boy, you look on, get on your... <laughs> man, what's up, man? Dang. Hey, can we cuss on here? I'm about to cuss you. Absolutely. Absolutely indubitably. <laughs> Beyond the shadow of old doubt. <laughs> man, listen, man. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of the Waynesville Podcast. Coming live and direct from the couch. You're on too bad. And for all my first time and casual listeners, you come on back around now. Yeah, here. Yeah. Show them boys how you do it up in Harlem there, boy. Shout out. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? For all those Waniacs, all them people who locked in. That's what I'm boys saying in Atlanta. Lock. I'm, boy I'm locked in. Man, we want to welcome you too. And I love you. Yeah. From where? Heart. Corazon. You know what I'm saying? And so, man, for, for those of you, all the first time in casual listeners, you may be wondering what is the Wayne World Podcast about. I'm glad you asked. Man, this is a podcast dedicated to the modern male Christian. Seeking accountability, encouragement, and entertainment. You know, it's a safe haven for the believer. And essentially, we want to water the world with grace. And so we thank you guys for tapping in. We thank you guys for subscribing right now, hitting the notification bell at this very moment, for liking the video before we even get into any of this, and commenting below. You know what I'm talking about? So listen, man, episode number 75. Man, set, what is it? 75. That boy, that bilingual, ain't it? Hey. <laughs> I really thought you was about to try to big slug me. I was. I was. Let's say that. Yeah, then they can't hate on you, man. I they didn't. try, I yo. Yo. I, I just thought it was going to be a good epi, so I'll let yeah, you make it, man. They want, they want to try, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, man, episode number 75. Wow. Don't die here. Ooh. Don't die here. I feel a word of ruin in my spirit about quitting on life. There's always something more. Wow. So there's some things we got to get into, man, man. because it's stuff that I see around me. Of course, Mm -hmm. it's the, it's the life I've actually lived, man. I, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff that I've talked about (sighs) that I, I've, I've told people, man, I'm just like, listen, life has dealt harsh blows, very harsh blows. But I've just decided that I'm not going to quit. I've just decided that I'm not giving up. I'm going to fight until the victory is won. You know what I'm talking about? And so before we get into that, I got to ask a question. Folks, what's the biggest what's the biggest thing that you've gained from a mistake that you've made? Perspective, insight, mm. um, wisdom. And them, them three right there yeah. for me. Yeah. Channeled in the right vein, you probably have, if, if nothing else, learned how to uh, approach a situation better than you did Absolutely. before. Oh, yeah. Wild Era Creative. I asked Trey, I said, man, learning about, learning about your company, Wild Era Creative, it's a great play <clears throat> on words. 
But where did you get the what did you get where did you get the old gumption to come up with a wild era creative? And he said, Man, I have had to learn the hard way in life. I've in my business. Nobody gave me a how to on how to be successful. Wow. On how to, you know what I'm saying? Like keep pick up and keep going. Like I you know, He's painted murals and or whatever, or he's done different things in life. He's done bodybuilding. He's done whatever. He's worked for different companies, and he had to learn the hard way. You know, going, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, being a creative, and so that's where Wild Air Creative was birthed. And so, do us a favor, our loyal local listeners, Please. those in other places, go check out underscore Trey Wild on Instagram. And, and 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 see what he's learned and turn at you know what what, what that song say traded beauty for ashes folk like he mm-hmm. you know he he's created oh you gonna sing mm-hmm. you got a platform mm-hmm. folk go ahead he gonna hum he gonna hum you to death mm-hmm. <laughs> go on pull from that old diaphragm <laughs> stay that thing on up hey that boy that boy won't do this so bad I would do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious. But yeah, man, go check out Wild Air Creative at underscore Trey Wilder, you know what I'm talking about, and tell him at Mo uh, Wayne's World Podcast and Randy C. May sent you, you know what I'm talking about. That way. Aren't you glad you came to, to be here? So anyway, <laughs> so listen, man, the whole uh, the whole, the whole uh, dynamic of don't die here. Wow. You know, very encouraging, very straightforward. Um, mm-hmm. Listen, man, I definitely want to tap into some personal experiences here and, and allow, allow people to get a look into... What has made us who we are and how we have gotten to the place that we are in life that, you know, we just keep coming. You know what I'm saying? Like I've experienced enough failure in my life or or lessons or, you know, whatever you want to call them for a lifetime. And the one thing that I am certain of what they say, uh, death and taxes is for certain. <laughs> and another one is just I'm just not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. Like if I allowed the things that I've dealt with in my life to stop me from going forward, I would be dead by now. It's a reality. Like I, man, listen, being grown up in a household without my mom, without my dad, with the older grandmother, they were drug addicts. Um, I've been locked in closets. Um, I, I, I've seen it all. I've I've lived a lot of life. It's funny because, um, you know, when I got my grill, got my bottom, they were a lot of people were like, "Man, we didn't think you were that type of guy." Like a lot of people said that you don't look like you would be into that. And it's like, well, I grew up on the east side of Fort Worth. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up in the hood. The only thing that kept me from being a, a straight goofy out here is, is God. Honestly, wow. I would I would probably have way more kids and and way more issues, you know what I'm saying, than I already have or been dead or in jail because I was actively pursuing that lifestyle up until I was about 14 years old. I was literally trying to be in the streets. Mm. And it was literally times where I was finna go with grown men to do dumb stuff. And my uncle just so happened to be in that group and saw me and charged me up. Like, nigga, if you don't go home right now, <laughs> like you are 14, what do you think you finna do? Go out here with some grown men and get seriously hurt or killed? Because that was the type of activities that the people I was around at that time, that's what they were into. But it was all coming from a broken place. It was all coming from being totally misguided. I drank when I was 12, 13 years old, heavily. <laughs> because in my mind, was <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> this is the same cat who told me, "Oh, I beat that girl. Go to school and learn about my gritty." I was like, "This dude her is nuts." <laughs> that man say he was drinking at twelve. I was. I really was, bro. And but the idea was, people told me when I was young. I had aunties who said, "You gonna drink just like your mom." Wow. You gonna drink just like your dad. Wow. And in my in my immature brain, I said, "Well, this I, this maybe because they did it. If I do it, it'll make me closer to them." That was wow. what I rationalized in my young mind. Wow. Now, now, glory to God, I actually got to a point where I was like, 14 was like a turning point in my life that I really looked up and I was just like, "That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard." Like, it doesn't make sense. And why would you want to do that? 
Like that, like my grandmother, you know how, you know how, uh, those the older women are, they be like, I just sense it. It's something on it. I can, you know what I'm saying? They be having that thing on it. Mm. My grandmother told me that summer before I started high school, she said, I sense death on you. She was like, and I was coming in at one, two o'clock in the morning, drinking. That's when I first started having sex. Like she was like, I sent something on you that's not good. And she said that to me twice in my life. Wow. Once when I was in like fifth grade, I had a really, 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 really bad anger issue. Like I was, it might've been younger than that. It might've been like third or fourth grade, but I just remember like I was in trouble all the time. And she was like, that ain't a, that, that ain't a good look on you. Like it's some bad things to follow you if you stay on this path. And I straightened up. And when she said it to me that night, when I came in, I, I Oh, I'm going to tell you what I did, too. I played a horrible joke. And the sad part is I was cool with it because it got me out of trouble. But I dang near gave my my granny a heart attack for real. So I'm out to like 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I, I know I'm going to get in trouble. I know it. But I'm just like, I'm going to accept it for what it is. I've been out drinking with my kinfolk. You know what I'm saying? My older cousin. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And we just literally sitting out on the block, chilling, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we rapping, all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we really was, <laughs> was lame, honestly. But anyway, <laughs> so what I did was I crept in the house, and I tell my, I tell my, I tell my kinfolk, I say, I tell my, I tell my brother, I say, go give me some ketchup. Lit- literally, I squirted ketchup on myself. <laughs> this was so bad, bro. I squirted ketchup on myself and had my, my brother run in the room and say, Granny, granny, something happened to, to, to Booger, does they call me? Something happened to Booger, like he got shot or something like that. My grandma lost it. Lost it, lost it. Bro. And I was, I'm like, no, 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 it was a joke. I'm okay, I'm okay. Boy, and she, bro, the, all this was just to get out of trouble. <laughs> you are sick. Bro, and it worked. Like, I didn't get in trouble for being out late, but she was just like, don't ever scare me and play with me like that again, blah, blah. She was crying going, I mean, like, bro. And I was just like, I went in the room and felt justified. Like, <laughs> I was like, shoot, I didn't get in trouble. Well, I was nuts, bro. Like, psychopath. Like, what is wrong with dude. me, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you see the air of your ways. Bro, I was out of there. But, uh, but just to put things in perspective of don't die here, like I was trying to find my way. I could have reserved myself to the idea of right. this is the life that you're going to live. You're going to be a little thug, a little gangster. You're going to whatever comes along with that. I was now the reality is God allowed me. I, I had an encounter with God at a very young age that I just had a different understanding that this this ain't the life for me. Mm-hmm. Like I said, glory to God for that. But it's just some of those 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 uh, harsh realities of life, man. That you you are a product of the choices that you make. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I you know just and you can pick from anything, honestly. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, just kind of give give us an insight on that. Which man, you, here's what I want to say to the to the person, man, because everybody doesn't have um, the type of, of view that we have on life, man. So let me just give you a little perspective. Don't let don't let the enemy trick you into thinking that where you are is where you're going to always be. Mm-hmm. That's a dead sentence. Because yeah. if, if you're sitting in the middle of all hell, you'll be okay with dying there because you think it's, it, it's not going to get better. It's not the case. So mm-hmm. whether it be, I see you got some we got some topics up there. Yep. So if it if it if it was a divorce or if it is child support, you got divorce if you got divorced five years ago, you still mad over child support. Here's where you're dropping the ball. If you can embrace it and understand that you can't change it, what if God opens up your mind and shows you how to make up that income in another area? Mm-hmm. What if if you can let if you can let go of the anger and the bitterness in your heart? What if He breathes on your business? What if you mess around and get whole? What if you mess around and learn from your mistakes in that divorce? Or that 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 failed right. business. Mm-hmm. What if you mess around and get your finances together, and then you can go out here and be successful, and go out here and actually make some change? What if it don't phase you? <laughs> <laughs> what if you can still vacation and <clears throat> jump on planes when you feel like it, and still shop where you want to, and still eat where you want to? What if it don't yeah, phase you? Buy yourself bikes. Like what if you could do stuff <laughs> like that? <laughs> what, what if, if you could what do if, that? Yeah, just hypothetically, that's major. <laughs> 
No, man, but but seriously though, man. So here's what I have to say to you, man. That, that don't die here. One of the one of the toughest, one of my lowest points in life, man. One of one of my good friends, um, Madison. Yeah. Um, she called me. She said, "Bro, you don't sound good." And this is what she this is all she said. She's like, "Get up." That's all she said. She said, "Get up." And then the get up stemmed and it sparked something in me. And, and, and I got up and I showered. I went and got some food and I ran some errands and stuff like that. And I, I just, I didn't feel like myself for like a week. I was, I was down bad. Yeah. Probably about six, seven, eight months later, I was laying in bed and I was fine. But the Lord was gave me like, he's like, man, there's something to the whole get up piece. Mm. So I, I got up, I went to my office, man. I grabbed my Bible and notepad. And um, and some study materials, and I started looking up get up. And so I went to um, I went to the story of David and Bathsheba after um, after the baby died. It says that David got up and praised. Mm -hmm. And then I went to um, went to down with Job after the after that first test of the enemy. Same thing says he got up and praised. See, she told me just to get up. Mm -hmm. There really weren't any more instructions. After she told me to get up. Sometimes you're not going to have the answer. You're not going to have what the next play is. You're not going to, you're not going to know who to call. You're, you're not going to know what to do, but I promise you, I assure you, I am a living witness. that If you can just find a way to just keep getting up and keep showing up mm -hmm. and, and not fall into the thing that you know, you should not be doing. And you can find your way back to God's house, even when you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. If you can keep serving, if you don't feel like it, if you can keep doing all that when it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I promise you that that, that heaviness that you're walking around with, that, that depression, that anxiety is going to fade away. And, and before you look up, you're going to be so strong. Mm hmm. It, it is just something to it's, it's something it's easy to show it when when the money's good is it's, it's easy is it, it's, it's easy to show up mm -hmm. when the marriage is good it's easy to show up to church when the kids acting right and everybody in job it's easy to show up then mm -hmm. do it when it's uncomfortable right and here's what so here's what makes you so strong in in the in the getting up and the showing up and the going you look like Christ yeah <laughs> the cross beam that he carried yeah. was designed to make him quit and be defeated. That way, when he got when they when they, when they pinned him up there, he would be he want to give up. He just want to die. He did it while inconvenient. A lot of us fall into bad situations in life, and the first thing we say, "I ain't even do nothing." <laughs> Actually. You've done a lot. Yeah. Nah, and you deserve right. you deserve far worse than what you're getting. If we just want to be honest. Yeah. I deserve far worse than anything I've ever gotten. Yeah. I don't deserve to be here. Facts. Yeah. He really didn't deserve it. Nah, real talk. He lived a perfect life. Stainless. Yeah. Obedient. He did everything he was supposed to do. And still and still had to die. That's facts. He died for ungrateful people. If he died and got up, why shouldn't you? The marriage died and you don't want to get up. The job died and you don't want to get up. The business died and you don't want to get up. The church failed and you don't want to get up. You got church hurt and you don't want to get up. Every story in the Bible, that was a struggle and then there was some progress. Don't miss it. You got to you got to shift you got to shift your mindset. There are people to this day that call me and said, "Man, how did you make it through? How are you still so how are you just said another?" I said, first off, I let it hurt." You trying to rush the pain and go get high? You trying to rush the pain and go have sex? You trying to rush the pain and go drink? You have to let it hurt. Let it hurt. Feel <laughs> feel the pain. Listen, man, you got it. You got it. You got to let it hurt. And you're going to be so strong. Listen, you have to endure it. And ain't no timeline on it. I can't say you let it hurt for six months. Yours may take a year. But I promise you, if you can keep getting up and showing up and attaching yourself to the things that you're supposed to be doing and stay as far as you, you're not going to be perfect, but stay as far away from the things that you should not be doing, 
you're going to get stronger. You're going to be so empowered because you're now, whatever you went through, you're now in your weakness. And we're weak, when we're weak, he is strong. Listen, y'all want it to be sunshine and daffodils. There are no perfect situations. Listen, I've dealt with death. And I'm it, I'm gonna deal with it again. You can't stop. I, it's just it's a real reality. He didn't want you. She didn't want you. Okay. Godspeed. Maybe it was for something. Have we ever stopped to think about that? That all of the things that you're going through are ultimately helping you to be the person that you are to ultimately be. Right. Joseph was never going to be able to sit in front of his brothers and weep with a clear heart for those who plotted to kill him and left him for dead if he didn't go through, what was that? So was it 17, 14 years? 13 years. 13 years of subservient hood. That wasn't who he was. But he had to sit in it and accept it. Then get up and walk in who God called him to be. See, some of us, if you would just get back up, he'll line up the trail. He'll put the light to your path. But if you want to just lay down, where you going to go, baby? There's the, there's that there's that thing about uh, they were it was a cloud by day and, and and fire by night and all this and that. If you standing still, there's no need for a guide. If you're just gonna lay down, there's no need for me to help you, brother. Lay on the nail, then. How that feel? We gotta stop quitting on life. Transitions are gonna happen. People are gonna come and go. Businesses are going to fail. They're going to succeed. People are going to be friends. People are going to fall out and become enemies. That is going to happen. But you can't die there. She was everything to me. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like God had to teach you that he's your source. Mm -hmm. That, That sounds like God had to let you know that he's your first love. Can we get into can we get into some of that stuff? That the whole the whole idea idea of yeah I I, I held her in a little and, and and we you know obviously we all know we talk about dealing with the divorce but just the i just the realization of I held her in too high a regard oh yeah it, it, it like because people yeah. need to understand that you if 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 she what you eat sleep drink breathe he will allow. Right. For that to discontinue, right? To get you back where he needs you to be, right? You can worship your spouse. You can catch us. You can slip up and be worshiping your kids mm-hmm. if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you how you know. Let me let me tell you how you know that that you have put them before God. It's real simple. At the point when you're making concessions for God's word. For what they want, instead of checking them, you've now placed them before God. Mm. Mm. So, sister, I know you want to make him happy. That threesome wow. is adultery. You're sleeping with somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. That you ain't married to while well, married. I know you want him to feel good. The marriage bed is to remain undefiled. Bring somebody else in that bedroom. I know that that porn gets y'all warmed up. Oh, Lord. Here's why I got to talk about this, though. Because in my singleness, everybody, don't fornicate, don't fornicate, don't fornicate. Ain't nobody in church yet that came and talked to me about porn. I don't watch it. Right. Ain't nobody talking about it yet. I'm going to deal with it here. Mm-hmm. Let me shoot something back at y'all. Since y'all shoot something at me, I'll stop about <laughs> fornication. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> that porn that's jump starting your bedroom life. You better buy her next one, Jay. <laughs> 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 
You better give him some baby oil for his chest <laughs> and cut that porn off because you're lying different spirits into your house, man. Absolutely. Hey, hey, what what what, what old Doc Gones be saying? Spirit of Pornea. <laughs> Throw spirit of Pornea. <laughs> Get out my boy, man. Nah, for much. real I though. It's spirit not, of Pornea for real. Man, don't don't play don't just don't play with don't play with that stuff. Don't put their desires before what God told you to do. And let me say this. So he's trying to teach you a lesson. He's trying to build you up to be that man or woman that you're ultimately supposed to be. You don't want to get up from there. You understand that he is going to keep you there until your dying day. Because God is going to complete that assignment. Whether it's through you or somebody else. So your 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 disobedience is going to be the death of you. You don't want to grow. You don't want to mature. You don't want to be. See, because it's like what I was talking about uh, with Danny earlier. It's not even about you. What you're going through, that business, that relationship, that wayward child, that whatever. That is for somebody else. God is wanting to use you to impact and bless somebody else. Yep. We are vessels just to flow through. Mm -hmm. But because of your disobedience, he plotting something else. If you're okay with that, good luck. Mm. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to stay there. I, my whole life, I'd keep telling people, I only know how to not quit. It's just, and I think that there's a reward in that. There's something that God does for his people when we just decide to say, I'm not stopping. I'm going to fight. Oh, yeah. Especially when he whispers until you tell you to keep going. But you can't hear him, though. <laughs> you can't hear him. Because you letting your because your mama heard and your homegirl heard and your partner got this to say and you don't want to you don't want to open up the word. You don't want to listen to the word. You don't want to pray because you mad at God. Mm. He's doing it to build something up in you. But if you want to quit, if you don't want to fight. Have at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. It's sweet on the other side. What did Pastor Taylor say? What did he say when he was in the office that day? He said uh, he said something to the effect of... The answer's on the other side of the yes. The clarity comes on the other side of the yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So let that be something that you can internalize. Mm -hmm. Is when you finally stop fighting yourself and say, okay, God, I concede. Because a lot of this, when we talk about being believers, has everything to do with our yes. Okay, God, I will I will stay. Okay, God, I will go. Okay, God, I won't do that. There's something that he has for you. I always think about that, 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 that visual of it's it's the little they, they got the little white man Jesus on there though. <laughs> but he's reaching for the, the little bitty bear that the baby has in her hand. Mm -hmm. And then it's the bigger one. He has a like it's like four or five times bigger behind mm -hmm. his back. Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting for you to give it so I wow. can exchange it for something mm -hmm. that you'll have far greater value yeah. for. Uh -huh. Man, speaking of that, man, Dr. Goins always says, man, he said, listen, my whole life, I've never seen God not outdo himself. <laughs> and that quote, that's been stuck with me for the last like two years. But man, what I was going to say, man, as far as the embracing the Here's here's going to be your for the person that's currently going through, that's looking for the silver lining. Your breakthrough moment is when God aligns you with somebody who who is who 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 identifies with your spirit because they may know your story or they may be drawn to you and not even know your story. That happens too. Yep. Your breakthrough moment is going to be when that person, when you've made it to the other side, and that person is at wit's end. Literally ready to eat their gun. Yeah. 
They're ready. To, they're ready to ready end it all. They're ready to leave their family behind. Their kid. They're ready to. They're ready to end their life. And you're able to comfort them. Cause because now because now you sit back, you're like, dang, I know I was down bad, but I wasn't finna kill myself. Yeah. I am grateful every day. I, I really am. I, I I am I am grateful to God that God allowed me to endure and overcome some stuff that some people killed themselves behind. Mm-hmm. Don't take it for granted. Don't take that for granted. That yeah. means you have an assignment. That means that, man, if you really think about how honorable it is to be used by God, makes, creates everything, and he, he going to give you an assignment? <laughs> we want the double portion of Job without the losing of everything. Teach it's easy to say, oh, his ladder was greater. But what about when he lost his kids? Mm-hmm. What about when, when when his livestock died? What about when the, when the boils and lesions was all over his body? What about when his friends accused him of something that he didn't even do? What about his wife told him to curse God and die? What about when his house got destroyed? What about when he lost everything? Y'all got to stop thinking that it, like this life is ebbs and flows. It is valleys and is in its in its uh in its uh mountaintops. This is the life that we live. And God and, and that's what faith is. That's what endurance is. That's who gets it. The person who endures to the end. Mm-hmm. My question is this. Aren't you tired? Mm. Haven't you had enough? Mm. Ain't you sick of the programming that you've dealt with your entire life? You start something, you feel motivated, then you quit, then you get down on yourself, then somebody comes, God sends somebody to encourage you, then you believe again, then you start, then you see traction, then you don't get what, it, then it takes longer than what you think it should take, and then you get down on yourself, and then you quit, and and it's a cycle. Anthony, mm. well, wow. well, we see, we keep telling y'all that we're qualified to hold you accountable because we hold ourselves accountable. <laughs> I am not gonna stand before you and talk about how my stuff don't stink, right? Because I didn't collapse the building. Facts. So, so let's just listen. This stop playing with this platform. Wow. Stop thinking that people are here to really that 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 there are people out there that really are here to feed into you to 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 help you learn from their mistakes for free. Wow. Yeah, at some point I would love for this to be something great. That that but please understand at the core of this we sit around and plot ways to feed into you guys to give you something that we may not have had. Mm. That I certainly didn't have at times. Stop playing with the platform. Wow. That's good. Stop though. taking things in and letting them go out the other way. Because this is just me. You got it. This is just who I am. Ain't you tired? You ain't had enough yet, though. You 42. You still writing your name on the orange juice. <laughs> you didn't have to move back in with your mama because you'd have made another career change. But God called you to that, though. We got to stop playing with it, yo. I'm talking to myself. Feel it. God has called us to something greater. I told Randy last night or in the morning whenever we was talking, we're sitting on our greatness. We are meant to be in certain rooms, on certain stages, in certain arenas. We are called to that. What people get nervous about, I'm built for. And that's respectfully. But y'all can't play with it. Once y'all realize that we really in this together, and and I and and listen, stop. Now somebody did make a good point. 
We were talking about the whole crab in a bucket thing, and they was like, well, crabs don't. Crabs are not supposed to be in buckets. <laughs> but the idea, but it's still the idea of that. Stop thinking that. And we talked about it on, on, on former, on, a, on a other podcasts, but it's like when you realize that our heart is to get in a certain place so that we can get other people in position. Yeah. That's when this platform will go somewhere. And I'm not just trying to make this a, oh, make sure you do like, share, subscribe thing. But it's like, no, seriously, though, some of you sit amongst us. We've broke bread with you. But uh, and it's that whole thing of a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. Let's make sure that we are taking these tools and blessing people with them, that we're actually using them and stop assuming that we just talking. Because I can promise you this. And somebody says it. it, it I, I ain't going to repeat what he says, but it's the whole idea of you can have the platform. You can get the opportunity. Don't mean it's going to work out for you. Mm-hmm. This is one thing I could, I could, I could to- toot my own horn about is there are people with bigger platforms that want to be on this one for whatever the reason ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't cause I'm, it's I'm called to it. Figure out what you're called to mm-hmm. and don't quit. Yep. Don't run away from the opportunity to be better right. for God to use you. Some of y'all know exactly what you're called to, but you don't want to do it. So you're going to die there. Mm. I refuse to die there. Listen, man, we probably got to do a part two to this thing because yeah. uh, Randy got to run, <laughs> but I'm like, Boy, I'm ready to go <laughs> in. Thanks, third up. I'm ready to go in. Listen, man, this is episode yeah. number 75. Yeah, man. The Wayne's World Podcast, man, coming live and direct from the couch, man. It's your boy Ant Mar, Randy C. Mays. We thank you guys for tuning in. I know y'all going to be disappointed that this got cut short. But if y'all want a part two, let us know, and we will do our best to get it right out to you, same week type situation. You know what I'm saying? Man, listen, dog. Don't die in places you're not supposed to be. Prodigal son, go on, come your boy back home. Oh. I love the thing I love about that story is he's he looked up and he was like, fam, what the world is going on? Surely my servants at my daddy house even do better than this. So listen, man. This is episode number 75, man. We thank you guys for rocking with us every single week. Man, y'all know how we end every podcast. Life. It's hard enough, so please don't just live. Live elevated until next week. We love you. May the Lord keep you. We'll see you at the conference. Sorry that there's no question of the day this week. Peace.